Jiggy, jiggy, heavy, heavy. All the girls love me. Like money, money. Hey, hey, hey. All eyes on me. Machiavelli, girl, you come spin me, yeah, yeah. Do it too for the on lucky yeah, ass, Hey. What? Hey. That's what they call me. Felai Versace. Hey, Felai Versace. Felai Versace, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the 15 for my bro, yeah. 15 with my bro, yeah. Lagos, I wanna come home. Lagos, I wanna come home. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Zara Beauty in the yeah yeah and I am back to back with another video. Yes bitch. Yes bitch. Okay like I'm looking scrunch holes on the leisure shows, my long hair you know what I mean like oh my gosh. But don't you guys like this look? I feel like it's really nice you know with a pop of color like green underneath i finally secured my wig yet guys because this wig was just done on you so i had to secure it down you know what i mean anyway guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to be talking about back chat i'm not going to really be doing a long ass review it's just going to be like a quick one and basically i was hoping to do this back chat reviews like for every episode so that to give you guys you know the rundown of what happened if you're not able to you know pay the 99p that it takes to watch it apparently now they're saying that you can watch the whole thing for 7.99 but then like, the whole episode you can subscribe to watch it for 7.99 but you only have access to it for two hours <sighs> we can all agree that the back chat marketing strategy is a fail a big fail epic fail failure of all proportions like whoever thought about this was like i said in my last video clearly only looking at the subscribers from the monetary perspective they're not looking at longevity they're not looking at their base they cannot they don't do market research into who are the people that are majority watching them you know even though you're no longer on youtube you're moving it over to another website at the end of the day you have to realize the views even from the torrent website because i finally got a torrent website even the views from that one is reducing you don't even have any hype around it because before when they drop an episode they'll, at least there's some hype you know around the episode and stuff but now it's like okay i don't even know when they drop anymore like i just see a video i have to go and check to see if they dropped anything so i really hope this is not the rise and fall up back i hope this is not the end i hope that you know this actually works out for them because i love what they're trying to do and honestly it is very interesting back chat on sensor is actually very interesting you can see that there was a lot of money that went into production you can see that they did a lot but it just sucks that they didn't do a lot of market research to know who their followers are and to find out if they are if they are going to be as you know loyal enough to start paying all that money if you told me i'm paying 7.99 you know for the whole series and to have access to it that's fine you know that's fine like i don't mind that but if you're telling me i only have access to it for two hours like what the fuck what do you think this is do you think you just come here and swipe for us and we just we just pay whatever money you ask us to pay like that does it make sense to you my brother andy i know you're an evil boy i'm i'm see you won't own you boy. Mm? but you gotta be smart with this talk man you can't this is something you could leverage and be making hundreds of thousands from it if you did your marketing strategy in a more strategic way ask experts don't ask your friends don't ask people you know go to the experts see the people that have done it well and see what made them successful like there were so many things you could have done youtube premium with anything bro but now well, whatever anyway we're here for the review so one thing i found out in this back chat honestly was the fact that like there was just too much nudity there was too much nudity i was like okay i understand you guys are trying to do reality tv show but even love and hip-hop doesn't show this much body this much flesh like i understand you guys are like yes we're on our, we're big boys now we're on our own platform now we don't need you motherfucking youtube we can show nudity but it's like it's not necessary nudity. It's something you could crop off. I know you guys want to do over oh, there every time reality show, but it was too much. Like I seen it and I was like, we could have done without this. We could have edited this out. But this was not. This was not necessary. You should have told them to wear some clothes. It was just. It was just nasty. I didn't like it. It was just nasty. I just. I just felt some type of way. I was like, like y'all are doing the most right now. I understand y'all are trying to move from you know small time youtube debate show to reality tv love and hip-hop i hope one network picks you up which is great 
but at the same time we don't need all that nudity i wasn't appreciative and it was mostly the girls that were nude that's one thing i found out it was like i mean the guys you can't really do much you can't go around with your their, their pee pee all around the place you can't go around with your penis hanging around but like but just the fact that uh, i don't know it just hurt me there was just something about it that hurt me i was just like this is not necessary we can do without this you know why why but th that was one thing in this episode that really pissed me off I also like the fact that Wumi Bello checked Riva, honestly, because Riva, I felt like she was just talking shit. <sighs> Riva. Sometimes that girl, she can be sensible, sometimes it looks like she smokes, she smoked uh, a jegule weed. Like she smoked a baby weed. Like you know what I like, I, like you know what I mean? Like she just looked like she smoked one stupid thing, one synthetic weed that just fucking with her brain cells. How can you go and tell a boy, someone that's doing her job, or oh, oh, fucking do your job, mate, or do your job right? What the fuck is that? Girl, if I was the one, I'm, I would have been looking at her straight face like, explain yourself. Explain yourself because I'm not understanding. She was just going on. The girl was telling her, "Look, I don't, I, I don't appreciate the fact that you know you said that kind of nonsense to me. I understand that as a host and whatever, I'm meant to be nice and get along with everybody. But there's a level of professionalism that was not professional. That was reverse way of trying to see what this girl can do, and that's honestly what I felt. Because if it was me, I'd have looked at you up and there like, bitch, you said what? You said the fuck what? I'm not telling you to fucking fix your hair, fix your face. I'm not telling you to do nothing like that. So can you let me do my shit? Like, nah, I felt the girl's annoyance. It's like, really, like, I like the fact that she kept calm and she didn't say anything there. That's a level of professionalism. Um, and obviously, you know, that's what you expect from someone that is not a part of the cast member. You don't want unnecessary drama. I like the fact that she didn't, you know, talk about it in front of everybody. She went to meet her and talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, which is great, which I feel like the best. Well, you could tell her annoyance that she has every right to be annoyed. Like, how are you going to tell me that kind of shit in front of everybody? They will not think it's cool to say that to me. Like, fuck that shit. I'm not part of the cast members, man. So better give me that fucking respect. I'm not rimless London. I'll be shining TDE all of you. No, 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 no. I don't fuck like, I don't fuck with people like that. Like, I felt like, I, honestly, if I was a woman girl, I'd have checked her worse than she did. Like, I'd have checked her quickly. Excuse me. Like, excuse me. Cameras are rolling. Thank you. Anyways, <laughs> I think like, so I think the other episode, I think episode two, I didn't, it wasn't really like crazy. Episode two, I think what really happened there was that like, um, Esther cooked food and I think she was really trying to try new news. She cooked food and she was saying, come and eat. And then she started talking nonsense and trying to bring back, oh, you will say something about me, you always have my name, mama, while the girl was eating the food. They were also telling the girl to eat food, you're not eating. The girl go fear, or as a Nigerian girl, where she be? At the chop, you know they chop. Now lie, we both know go chop. We, we go look at each other like this. Mm. No be me, we go die, yo. No be me, we go die. <laughs> I just felt like, as usual, Choma with her nasty attitude. That, that Choma girl is like, she just, it just like, uh, like, I'm just like, I don't know how you guys are managing this girl that she's just getting more annoying. It seemed like she took the advice that I said last time that she was not even relevant and nobody really heard her voice. And the fact that she wasn't really there for season two, I mean season three or whatever season it was. And then she came out wanting to do the most. So that's basically what I felt I felt was going on. Like she just she's just there to try and do the most. And I'm just like, God, this is not necessary. All this gra gra, yeah, 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 my end, end, end. Like take it down. A couple notches, boo. Like, like this is not, this is not wherever it is you come from. Like, calm down. Everybody's on the chill level. Yeah, what's all the? I don't know. She just give me this. Just, just. <laughs> you all know how I feel about trauma. It's not today. It's not. It's not yesterday. Like, girl, just irritating. Every time I think that she's normal, she just come and just spark. I hate you. Just spark. Like, I beg, I beg. Lucas, I yo. Is it just me or Lucas actually making sense this season? Like. I was thinking about it, like I was like, whoa, this guy has actually not done anything really stupid since he came to the to the to the house. Like he's been really calm, really funny. Like I was just like, okay, Lulu, okay, Mr. Fast and Furious, okay, boo, I see you trying to trying to gain that love from the crowd. Like honestly, have you guys noticed that he hasn't done anything, you know, out of the ordinary? He hasn't tried he has, even in the debates, he's been cool headed, he hasn't really been stupid. Yeah, like you can tell that sometimes he flares up, but he hasn't really been like, you know. Gra, 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 like you know we how we know Lucas to be, which is great. So this episode they also brought back honey. Honestly, I can't even remember anything about honey. I don't know what the beef was, I don't know anything, but everybody was not happy about it. And especially Esther, Esther was like, something has to be done. Apparently, she and Honey, honey have like the past or whatever. And I know I remember Honey went on some other person's show to talk shit about Black Chat though. So I don't know why they were really invite her, but I guess it adds drama. But um 
I don't know. The girl just gives me this slow vibe. Like she's kind of slow. Like I don't, I don't. God forgive me. I'm sorry, but like she just is it just me? She gives me this slow rigmarole kind of vibe. I don't. Uh, just, just, just not sharp. She doesn't seem sharp. You know what I mean? I can't remember anything about her. I can't. Like I know she was in season one. I think I remember her one time, but that's about it. Like I can't. I don't know jack shit about this girl, and I'm sure as hell not going back to watch shit about her. Um, but she seemed like, like I said, very slow. She's just does. She just does her thing. Gra 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 gra. And she was. She, they had a task where they had to make cake, and Mark Cuban. Um, he kind of cheated, so the team got disqualified. And Honey was the guest judge, and they called taste the cake and choose which one she prefers and then they ended up finding out that she's staying in the house with them and um, Esther as usual for Mrs. Overdramatic the house problem with everybody in the house so they say she can't stay that she can't stay that she has to go and ask cast members I'm like first is no, first it was Esther and Nunu you're thinking that you cannot you cannot now they brought the Ogaki foods for you and <laughs> now you're screaming you cannot you can, who can you not stay with like who can you stay with and then um so yeah, they that was something they were meant to they would they they, they finished at the end of part one, uh, before the debates. Like we we're trying to figure out if Esther was not going to stay with the girl because she was saying she'll either go home, you know, or, or go and stay with Choma if that is not rectified. But she's not staying with that girl. So that was something they were going to figure out, you know, before the debate. So maybe we'll see what happens in episode four. Now for Shanae, that Shanae girl. Is it just me? Like it's like yap yap yap, and it's, it's not connecting. It's not making sense. Like so, she called her out this week about what she said last. I think the first episode where she was like, "Oh, I've never watched back chat a day in my life." And she's trying to form Mrs. Important. Oh, what's back chat? Oh my god! Like I like what Lucas said. It was like you can't be shitting on the whole idea, man. Fine, you have not really watched it, but doesn't fine. Like maybe you don't really know us like that. Yeah, they are normal people, but you can't shit on the energy because at the end of the day, you're here. You asked to be here. Nobody forced you to be here. So all this, oh, I've never really watched Pasha. Shut the fuck up. You have watched it. You know what it is. Abe. So just talking, and then she now said like fighting with Nunu about um hairband. Okay, let me tell you what I feel about the hairband thing. To be objective, Nunu acts like a brat. She acts like a sports brat. She acts like someone that's always had her way. Like she's always had her way for everything. That's one thing I've realized. I think in a way it made her independent, stand on her own. She's not part of this mob mentality. She's a very independent girl, which I really like her. And I like the whole to all the my black girls thing. She really writes hard for women and you can see she's a feminist it's 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 it. but she's spoiled she's a brat okay she's used to getting what she wants but you can tell that she's a brat she's she's just a brat so that is for sure so you borrow something from someone so Nunu borrowed a headband from Sinead right and Sinead said you know what I need my headband back and she woke this girl up in the morning to give her the headband now I understand see not everybody likes to be woken up from sleep and for me Chanel I was like no offense but this is a headband can't it wait like really can't it wait it's one headband there are five or six other girls in the house it can't wait you did not need to wake this girl up from sleep it's not that some people that are not oh immediately you wake them up <gasps> alert you know what i mean some people they need time to regroup themselves they need to like think like someone like me i hate when you fucking wake me up from sleeping if I, if I don't need to be woken up from sleep. don't fucking wake me up for no reason except the house is on fire don't wake me up so some people they don't like that shit some people are groggy when they come when they wake up they can't remember shit they are they are angry that you woke them up from their sleep and everybody's going to act like whoa wow wow i feel like Sinead was looking for an excuse to join the I hate no no bad wagon and I love the fact that Mark caught that 100% like it's so obvious it's like you have no reason to hate this girl but now you want to have a reason to hate her because I don't know how headband got into this is how you are even Nunu was doing the most and saying the most was like oh this is what I'm like headband niggas it's like you guys have been having this in your heart you're just letting this out this is just a way for you to see how you really feel about each other but I was like this is this is not necessary all the it's not necessary from headband they enter into personality issues i'm like yeah this headband are you sure it's not a magical headband like what's up <laughs> do you know are you sure it's not a witchcraft headband because honestly Sinead, i felt like she did not need to wake this girl up for her it's if that's the only headband in the whole house i will understand but there are many other in fact what's her name choma just removed one headband she and i gave it to the girl like 
it wasn't that big of a deal. I just felt like she was looking for an opportunity to just join their Hazen band who are gonna be part of the crew. And one thing I really liked, I love the nicknames that Mark and B Money gave to the girls. I love it. That was my best part. I cracked the fuck up. So they called Shanae 6 9 <laughs> And at first they were like, oh, 6'9". I was like, ah, I'm talking about having an argument about 6'9", like actual 6'9". But then I realized they call her 6'9", because she's always changing her wigs, different colors. Like, literally, this girl has been pink, blue, and blood clad. She didn't even look last week, my guys. I was shook. Some pink hair, pink lipstick, golden shadow. This girl looked like a oompa loompa. She looked like a oompa loompa. So, I, I couldn't even focus on the episode. I was just looking at makeup. It was disgust. Gold eyeshadow, pink. The lipstick matched the hair. She's not light skin. Everything just is like her face was just a lollipop, chewing gum. That's what she looked like. Porero. Like I was like, okay, but wait, that who brought you out looking like this? Who put you to come out like this? Why are you running? Where are you running to? Where are you running to? I don't know, look like chewing stick. Like what's up, man? That girl's makeup was disgust. It was disgust. I was like. Girl, you're for the person that's meant to have the most expense in terms of video vixen and all influencer, etc. Girl, you're out here looking a hot damn mess. But yeah, she was talking to Nuno. I feel like it was very, very necessary. The headband situation was very necessary. And Mark caught it. He was like 6'9, which is Shanae. Like I said, I love that. They called her 6'9. They called Esther Queen Eva, Queen Shiba. And then they called um one other person, whatever their name is, anyways. And uh, <laughs> I found it to be hilarious as fuck. Um, he was like, 6'9 is literally just trying to find a way to enter into that crew. And he was like, he respects, he saw the fact that Nuno was doing. I feel like anybody from the outside can see this, but these guys have such a strong mob mentality that you know they're just so used to it, or maybe they just make it spicy that way or whatever. So he was saying that no no does get bullied, and it's like no one is really noticing it. And B Money was trying to make an like an excuse for it, but I also don't like the fact that Mark tries to explain everything anyway. He likes to do this. I'm a wise guy. It's like guy, calm down. At first I thought he was making sense, but he likes to be heard more than he likes to listen to people. That's what I found. He really likes to be. Talk. He likes to hear his own voice. He just likes to have this. Oh, I'm a gym guy. I mean, he's he gives me a very authoritative dictatorship vibe. Where it's like it's my say or no way. Do you know what I mean? And he's very very chauvinistic. He's very very chauvinistic. He's a misogynist. You can clearly see some of his views and stuff are so misogynistic. I mean, if you get along with Lucas, <laughs> enough said. <laughs> I think that's enough. That's enough proof that you need. If you can get along with Lucas, my nigga, then obviously you got. Birds of the same feather. <laughs> so yeah, Mark, I feel like I, I'm torn between understanding his views, but at the same time, like I said, they're very close-minded, narrow-minded, and he talks more than he listens to people. He just like wants to say his own thing and give this air of you know superiority to see. But at the end of the day, I feel like he's in, he's a good-natured person. You can tell he's not coming from a place of contempt. You can even he made up with B Money and they're actually cool. You can tell B Money ain't want no smoke. He ain't want no smoke. So, you know, I like the fact that he seems like a very good-natured person and stuff like that. B-Money, on the other hand, there was an incident about, you know, giving people, holding his phone. He was, he still had his phone and they told everybody to, you know, give their phones away and this guy wouldn't give his phone and then he started talking rudely to one of the crew members and, you know, everybody was really pissed at him. And I felt like, honestly, yes, he felt like he was being attacked, but come on, if everybody gave their phone you know for the same reason you know what i mean everybody has an obligation to make this work and they gave their phone why should you be an exemption do you know what i mean it just kind of it gave up this very like careless you know vibe like it just was rude i understand where they're coming from it's like so we have to stop everything and everybody has to wait for you because you choose to be your phone it just was very selfish and i, I was starting to understand that big money might just have some Colomental screws, you know, in his head and stuff like that. And then during the debate, we found out something really spicy. The other girl, Atelia, the new girl I said that Harley talks, she was actually a dominatrix and she's she's into fandom and stuff. Now that's a whole lot, lot of topic, and I maybe if you got something to cover, I can talk about it. I'm actually quite well versed in, you know, you guys know me, I'm an IT guy, I'm an IT know. I like to gather knowledge and information, so I do know a lot about the BDSM scene and the fandom scene and all that kind of scene. So if you guys want me to make a video. 
video explaining that and stuff like that i can do that um but yeah she basically was saying that she was into domination and she had slaves and you can tell she gives up that vibe you know like if you're into that kind of thing if you're not into vanilla lifestyles and you're into like you know non-traditional and non-conservative ways of relationships you can kind of tell through people's auras what they're into her tattoos give it away she looks like a person that like a submissive man would really want to you know serve and stuff like that so when she was telling the story she was very straight face she owned it which i really appreciate no need to lie no need to try and paint yourself in the innocent light she did what she did she said what she said my nigga made up to fifty five thousand pounds in two years from one slave yes bitch people make money from that stuff but it's not everybody that's cut out for that kind of life and she said it she's like look look not everybody's gonna make it in this you're either cut out for it or you're not the same way everybody wants to be a next cut or sugar baby but y'all know it's only one percent of sugar babies that are actually successful so it's not for everybody period and she was talking about it and because the debate was you know on this online influencer girls or whatever they actually resort to escorting you know to perpetuate this lifestyle this is something i've talked about before on my channel i'll link the video in the description box below about what instagram girls really do in dubai and all that kind of stuff and you guys can go check it out for yourself but you know it was an interesting topic but they veered right away from it i started talking about something else and you know it, it kind of I guess, I guess maybe they couldn't say much about the topic but then started talking about personal experience um but the debate was kind of yeah it wasn't it wasn't it, it didn't stick to the point and then esther proko came out of nowhere because she had dominatrix she came to he, he, he. she could not just get sit this one out <laughs> and honey did not join the debates in one way one way for the like for one for some reason honey wasn't part of the debate um i think maybe they shot the debate um in the morning and then the rest of the house scenes you know at night or whatever because honey wasn't there yet and stuff like that i felt like i really liked nunu's ginger hair she looked very beautiful i was like wow this girl's actually a really beautiful girl you know and everybody there looked nice so i guess since they just inserted honey in Say they're going to insert biscuit in maybe sometime next week and then they're going to insert, insert another new girl because if you if you watch their intro you can see all the people that are going to be there so honey was there biscuit was there and some other new babe like this that I, I don't know about so i'm guessing as the episode goes on they will just insert them one one way or the other but yeah guys this was meant to be a quick one it ended up being a long one again but what do you guys think about the back chat episode um let me know what you guys think about it in the description box in the comment section below um let me know if you guys want me to do more of these videos you guys seem to like them by the way i'm starting a new series on my channel yes and i'm sure you guys are going to like it so make sure you hit that subscribe button like this video for more videos like this make sure you turn on my, your notifications so you can be notified when i post another video anyway guys till next time i'll see you and talk to you guys later bye